I'm driving a Continental too. Look at that. Wow. Now this is a cool car. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week we're in the Sunshine State in Ocala, Florida to check out a few more of the cars in the collection of Jim and Rick Schmidt. And this time we're going to focus on one of my favorite cars of all time, the 56 Continental Mark II. And we have not just one, but three of them. And each one of these babies was originally owned by one of the sons of Edsel Ford. And of course, restored to a level that will absolutely knock your eyes out. Oh man, I love this job. Check these babies out. Rick, man, great to see you. Great to see you again, too. You know, it's always fun coming down here, not just because the weather's so nice, but you always have such cool toys. Oh, well, I think we've rolled out the crown jewels. You for this really episode. have. You know, I'm surrounded by more Mark II's than any sane person <laughs> should have. Continental Mark II's, 1956. I mean, and you, uh, you and your dad have now three of these babies, yes, right? Yes, yes. Well, it was about six, eight years ago that we came down and we did the blue one. And we did one. the blue one, which was the first one that we owned, and we had owned that since the early 80s. We actually purchased that for my grandfather back then. Now, that, and that's, I mean, Mark II's are very special to begin with, but these three are all special. And they are all Ford family cars, right? That, that, that one came from William Clay Ford Sr., who uh, also owns the Detroit Lions, which, which is his favorite color combination, uh -huh. is that blue, 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 and silver. And, uh, and then Dad met up with a, uh, with a retired Ford executive named Edson Williams, who owned Benson Ford's Mark II, which would have been William Clay's brother. That's the green one? Mm hmm That's the green one. Uh, they, they, they never did reach a purchase agreement, but, uh, but Mr. Williams passed away, and he had left word with his estate that he felt, thought that the, the best home would be with the William Clay card, so we got first right of refusal on it and, and managed to pick it up. So, so that's two. That's two. Now three. Three. This is Henry II's <laughs> Mark II that he special ordered for his wife. And that was, uh, that was one that we had to do a little more thinking about. It was that bad? It was really that bad. Wow. Rusted to the door handles. Wow. But you guys took it on? Yes. Because, I mean, these are extremely expensive cars to restore, and you certainly know that. Yeah, yeah. We, we know all too well, unfortunately. And, <laughs> and, and that's why you, you see Mark IIs here and there, but they're usually just driver conditioned because the cost of restoration is so prohibitive. Yeah that it's just, uh, it, it, it kills the prospect right from the get-go. Well, these were such special cars. I mean, this was a, an entire division that Ford launched in 56 to, to make this world-class luxury car to take on Rolls-Royce, to take yes. on Bentley. Well, they were like, what? They were like 10 grand in, in 1956. That was, that was two caddies. Three, th three Thunderbirds. Three Thunderbirds. Yeah. I mean, that, that was a pricey car. It was really over the top in over every the top. way. Yeah. Well, like you talk about some of the interesting design features, and it doesn't look like anything in 56. The cars were taller, they had fins, they had garish chrome everywhere. And chrome's pretty subtle. She's a very low car, no fins. Uh, but this grill, you know, I think is stunning. Yes, and that's all die cast. Really? Too. Yeah. Whoa. Very heavy pieces, hard to chrome. That with the bumper, and you've got, you know, probably easy 150 <laughs> pounds hanging over the front end just in grill and bumper alone. And French headlights, mm -hmm. you know, and the, that chrome trim ring, so beautiful. And a big, big long hood, six, seven feet long, mm -hmm. and so straight, so, you know, so flat. It was just, just fantastic. <laughs> now, I don't remember ever seeing one with a cloth top, though. This was the only one built that way. Really? And Mr. Ford spec'd it out, and, and you can actually, we've actually got the original production sheets for all these cars. And it showed um, this? It uh, shows the uh, canvas hearts cloth roof. Wow. It also uh, shows the uh, the full broad cloth interior. Well, that's with the red other piping. thing because when I think of Mark II's, I, I think of Bridge of Weir leather. But this is broad cloth. All leather was probably the most popular mm -hmm. choice. But Mrs. Ford was probably a, a, a very uh, elegant lady mm. and a lady of means. She probably used to being driven around in the back of a limousine most of her life. And if you remember pre-war limousines, the chauffeur sat on leather. Yeah. But, but, the, but the ladies sat on wool. Yeah. Now, is this an AC car? Yes, all three of these cars are AC cars. And, and is that, I guess that's an AC port right up there? The yes, duct? yeah. All the AC goes up through the C-pillars and is diffused through uh, vents in the ceiling. Oh, wow. You, you can imagine that when people saw these cars in magazines or, or, or viewed them in showrooms, that, that just had to be the wildest, most yeah. beautiful thing they'd ever looked at. Oh, man. And, yeah, they, of course, it's a Continental. 
So it's got to have, it has to have this, uh, the bump it's back the here. It's continental hump and there's actually a spare tire underneath that. It's not just Holy for cow. styling. That does uh, make room for the and tire. And the exhaust comes out comes through out the, of the bumper. bumper, which I love. My, my mm -hmm. 56 Premier does that too. It doesn't look quite as nice as this. Um, and it, it, the tail lights are fantastic. They look brand new. Mm -hmm. On these cars also. Oh, that's like right. Yeah, that's, that's how, the, you, that's you, how the, you got to the gas. Wow, yeah. Well, now these came with uh, 368 engines. I know that... Uh, William Clay had his hot rodded to a 460 yes. in, in the factory. Mm -hmm. uh, is this one still a 368? This one's still a 368. Oh, well, let's go look at that. Okay. Now, this one also doesn't have the hood ornament. I mean, I thought all Continental Star. Oh, you the, noticed that. Continental Star, what happened? Uh, Mrs. So, Ford didn't like the hood ornament. She didn't like it. <laughs> she didn't like the hood ornament, so this one's never had it. Well, I guess she, she gets to pick, doesn't she? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we'll open up this okay. ornamentless hood. Oh, wow. That is, that is just. That's gorgeous. That's as beautiful as the outside. And at the Continental valve covers, I mean, those are just those yeah, are gorgeous. Beautiful cast valve covers. Uh, all of the uh, the uh, wing nuts are, are Continental, Continental stars. Continental stars there on the air cleaner and, and on the uh, power steering. Well, I, I know you guys, uh, these cars run as good as they look. Can we take this one out and Absolutely. do a little exercise? Let's, yeah. let's go. <laughs> <laughs> They made right around 3,000 of these. Yes. Right? Yes. They started production after the car debuted in uh, October at the uh, Auto Salon in Paris. And uh, between October 55 and New Year's, on January 1st, they produced about 1,300 of them for uh, January through uh, following August, another 1,300. And then they did 444 1957 models. They lost money on each one until the whole entire project was, was uh, canceled and the entire division, the Continental Division, was shuttered. In two, a mere two years. To this day, it's considered, even by, I think, by uh, automotive designers as one of the prettiest cars ever built. How long was the restoration for this? Three years. Really? Wow. Three years. Did you guys see it through that process, or I mean, did you go visit it? Yes, we were constantly accumulating parts, and fabrics, materials that were needed as it, as it went along. Um, almost 3,000 hours went into this car really? of labor, yes. And, and, and as such, you can just see why, why somebody would just stop right there. <laughs> yeah, <What? laughs> or, or, or a thousand or so before that. <laughs> right, unless you're gonna do it yourself and you've got a whole lot of time on your hands. And you're really, really good. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, driving a sleek black Continental Mark II makes you feel pretty, you know, pretty stately and everything. But I, I got to tell you, I am looking forward to the, driving the green one. That sucker is just, that thing is beautiful. Yeah, this is, this car has a very serious yeah. kind of banker's Banker, car yeah. attitude to it. We're on our way to the board meeting on Wall right. Street. Um, the green car is, is uh, hey, I've retired, I'm a multimillionaire, and I'm going golfing. Life is good. <laughs> it's that kind of car. I love driving Continentals. <laughs> I love the Mark II. But I tell you, and that, that is a fabulous car. But I'm a sucker for green cars. And when I saw this car, you, you showed it at uh, Lake Mirror Classic. Yes. And I saw Last that year. thing and mm -hmm. it just it blew me away. I, this, is, this is gorgeous. Well, you know, it was funny. We, we were restoring both this green car and the, and the black Henry II at the same time. And w everybody was, was visualizing that the black car with the cloth roof mm -hmm. and, the, and the broad cloth with the red accent interior was just going to be the, the showstopper of the two. And when it's all said and done, this green car is the rock star. Whenever we take all three cars out together. It's a total rock star. Yeah. It's a great green. Mm -hmm. What is it? It's green lucite metallic. So kind of, you know, not a, not a very not a fancy you know, name. name or anything, <laughs> you know, but it sure looks good on the car. And the fact that it is metallic is you get, you know, when the sun highlights it, you get these, you know, these flares almost. Come yeah, out. It, it just really just <sighs> uh, makes all of the different uh, subtle uh, creases and lines on the car really pop and show off the styling. Yeah, yeah, and I, th I think that's true because I think the black car almost uh, hides some of those, but mm -hmm. with the, the metallic paint, it highlights every crease, every character line this car has. And, but then it's it's the interior, Rick. I mean, the interior. The interior taken in in with the exterior paint. It's just it, the car is an absolute beautiful, <laughs> beautiful thing to look at. This is a complete fashion statement. There's got to be at least four different greens in there. Mm-hmm. 
But and, and now again, this is a this is a combination. The other was broadcloth. Like I said, I typically thought of these as all leather, but this is leather and leather with a basket weave fabric uh, insert. And this car was really the most challenging in sourcing all of the materials to do the interior correctly really? with. We had to have the uh, insert, uh, uh, the weaved insert, custom woven, really uh, custom <laughs> loomed because uh, no reproduction exists. So we had that made to match and it matches perfectly to the original books. We had to have the headliner material custom woven because nothing in the aftermarket, nothing uh, was being reproduced. That Is came. it cloth? And it, it's, it? it's a woven nylon. Really? My father worked for so many months back and forth, thumbs downing on samples and demanding other <laughs> samples that some of the manufacturers that we were dealing with and, and uh, did walk away G from the gave project, up. gave up, and then dad would go on to the next one and say, okay, are you ready for me? Because here's what I want. <laughs> and here I come. But it's just, oh and, man, I mean, it's yeah. just. This car was actually in very nice original shape when we received it from Mr. Williams' uh, estate. But uh, dad just, he wanted to have the, the three cars freshly done and restored to the highest standard, so a part it went. And they are, okay. and it made a good pattern for the black car that was that we bought in pieces. <laughs> <laughs> this, this showed us how to put the there other one go. back together. You really knew after this. Now, the the, the black one had uh, the original 368 in it. Yes. The uh, William Clay's had the the upgraded 460. 460 that was installed in 68, but. Benson was way ahead of his brother. He was the first one to hot rod his Lincoln, and this one was upgraded in 1958 and fitted with a 430 oh, okay. Lincoln engine. Which was kind of the, that was the that was the top of the that line. That was the Lincoln top of the then. line back then. So. Let's go look at that. Baby. All right. So apparently Benson didn't have an aversion to the hood ornament. No, he didn't have an aversion to the hood <laughs> ornament. So this one's fully ornamented. Wow, chromed out too. Yeah. Um, yeah, chrome valve covers did, and air cleaner. It, did did he have it done that way? That was all done at the time. Wow. Now that actually almost looks like a physically larger engine, or is it the same block just punched out? No, it's not the same block. The 430 was a different series of, okay. of uh, engines. So. Well, you know, I would look really good driving this. I yes, would look, you would. I would look fabulous. You'd look driving. right at home. <laughs> Let's take this baby out too. Let's do it. Now this, this is a cool car. <laughs> this is I know, it's like you hopped into a completely different type of car with the color change. It, it changes the whole personality of the car. Mm -hmm. It's no longer a banker's car. This had to be kind of a shocking, you know, car to be tooling around in 1956. It just reminds me of pistachio ice cream. <laughs> yeah. And it's and not the low fat version. No. The full fat. The full fat. Full fat pistachio ice cream. Who would have figured that the pistachio green pistachio. Mark II <laughs> would be the one that the crowd just gravitates to while the other two cars are parked right next to it. So. But it, it, it does and, and I think you know I I think you could tell people about it and they, they would probably rank it third. Mm -hmm. But when you see it, and I think it is the combination, I mean it's striking from the outside. But this interior is just so over the top, I think, yep. that the combination of the two is, it, it, it just comes together as, as one of the most beautiful cars I've ever seen. It all came together beautiful. And you know, the other thing that's kind of interesting, because uh, the instrumentation is the same in all these, and the faces are the same. Yes. But in this car, the color of the face is almost the color of the rest of the interior. It's like it, it was made for this color. Mm -hmm. It's all completely color coordinated. They really ride so beautifully, don't they? Yeah, they do. There's no mistaking how much that you're pulling around in a two-ton flagship. It's, it's heavy metal. But the proportions of this car are absolutely absurd. <laughs> it's a two-door car with a, with a not terribly large rear seat. No, not a big on passenger an, On an enormous scale. <laughs> I love this car, man. I just love this car. Uh, life is good. <laughs> So until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Gage. Happy motoring. <laughs>